So welcome everybody and welcome Mandy. Thank you so much, Sharon. I just wanna say I'm uh, so yeah. excited to be here to join you for your Sunday group. Um, but first of all, I just wanna say thank you, Sharon, for being open to trying out our activator poll, something new, um, being our guinea pig to try that out. And, uh, and then providing an article. So um, some of you may be here today because you read the article. Um, and uh, just want to say thank you so much. So Sharon was saying that she told me a little bit about your group, that you've got women from all over the world. Uh, you've got some people here from what I see from UK, Australia, Ireland. So that is all very exciting. So I just want to say that, um, as Sharon mentioned, I'm an occupational therapist and gerontologist by background. I'm coming to you from my living room here in uh, North Vancouver, Canada. And I'm always so excited to do this uh, webinar presentation because while it's used for best practices here in Canada, the people who contact me the most throughout the years by far are people who have Parkinson's. And what they've told me is that um, for some of them, the, the, the effects have been life changing. So um, I'm always very excited to um, hear from people. And particularly, as I mentioned, overwhelming those people are people with Parkinson's. And just to let you know, just, just as an example, I just got this email from Rob. Um, oh, he's from the Yukon, that's going to northern, uh, uh, northern Canada, and he wrote here, so I've got <laughs> a set of the urban poles, and I, oops, sorry, and Can I, I ask walked, everybody and walked, who, oh, sorry. One second, Mandy, we're sure. getting a lot of background noise, so if you are not unmuted, if you are not muted, please mute yourself. I thought we had muted everyone, but please go ahead and mute yourself, because there's a lot of background noise. Oh, perfect, Thank you. Sharon. Um, okay. So he's got here, and he's got here, I walked and walked and walked. My brain has developed a new neurological pathway for walking, and I've noticed had noticeable improvements in stride and mood and absolute game-changing experience. I just wanted to say thank you. It's from Rob. So let me just give you a little bit of background why I've spent the last 15 years as an occupational therapist going around the world really talking about the benefits of walking poles uh, for rehabilitation, but all for just, also just for general wellness. And I just want to emphasize too, this is, um, uh, this is an evidence-based program. So the whole concept of the walking poles, or it's generically called Nordic walking, was brought to me by my Swedish neighbor. At the time, I was looking at healthy aging trends. And I think we can all agree that the Swedes are one of the healthiest cohorts on the planet. And I wanted to find out what they were doing. And what my neighbor told me is that everyone walks as their main form of um, of health and wellness, which I thought was really interesting when you think about all the things that we do, and the Scandinavians are simply just walking. But she also said there, everyone uses walking poles. It's actually part of their culture, whether you're a preschooler, whether you're an Olympic athlete, it was part of their summer training program for cross-country skiing, uh, you're a busy working mom, or you're an older adult. People use walking poles. And I had never heard of that concept before. And when I looked at the research, I was amazed because first of all, there's over 300 independent studies on PubMed. And that's considered to be our, you know, our website for good solid research. And 18 of those studies were on Parkinson's. So let me just say, I just felt like this is achieving our key goals for rehab for people with Parkinson's. So you've got the poles and of course, they're on both sides of your body. So that provides you with support. It forces you in an upright position. It improves all aspects of your walking. Uh, I'm gonna go into a lot more detail about all this later. It, it allows you to walk, to walk further, coordination, core strength. But most importantly, what I'd like to talk to you about today is how is that gonna significantly you know, improve your quality of life, just enabling you to walk more confidently, whether you're traveling, you're at the park, you're at a beach, 
you know, how's it going to help you out with reducing the risk for falls, just feeling better, being able to travel and socialize with friends and family. So what we did was I learned about this about 15 years ago. Um, and then what we did was we started looking at, well, how do you take that, um, all those great benefits and change the design so it's safer and more effective for people with uh, Parkinson's? And what we came up with this was the core grip and this um, and the ledge itself, which is really key in terms of balance, strengthening and posture. So what am I going to talk to you about today? Well, I've got a bit of a jam-packed schedule. What I hope to make it uh, practical for you is that we're going to um, do a bit of a, just an introduction about, you know, what is, you know, walking poles if you've never heard about it before. I'm briefly going to talk about the research, more pertaining again to Parkinson's. I'm going to talk to you about a way of using the poles and our design. So it's more about balance. But if you're in the earlier stages where you're really wanting to bring up your, um, your fitness intensity, I will show you a different technique. And then I'm going to show you a bunch of seated and standing exercises that we can do together, whether you've got poles or not. Um, for about 10 minutes, I'll do a summary and uh, talk about just where you can uh, get the activator poles if you're interested. And then I'm going to leave it so that uh, lots of time for Q&A. Okay, so let's go down to the basics. You're probably wondering, well, what is, we coined it as urban polling, but the generic name is Nordic walking. So basically, it is your upper body doing a technique that sort of looks like cross-country skiing. And if you're not familiar with cross-country skiing, I'll just let you know, it actually provides one of the highest cardiovascular workouts. And your lower body is simply walking. So just to simplify it, it basically is you're just walking with specialized walking poles. And what that allows you to do is that you're going to have balance, as I mentioned, on both sides of your body, but it's going to enable you to do an exercise that provides both strength training and aerobics. And of course, right now during the pandemic, with walking being one of the few recommended activities that you can do outside, I'm going to talk to you about how you can turn that walking into more of a full body workout. So let's just kind of take a, I got a video here. Let's kind of just take a look at what does it look like and, um, and um, how is it a very social activity as well? I assume this is pre-pandemic. Right, yes. Good point, Sharon. <laughs> yes, Sharon just mentioned that is pre the pandemic, but we do have lots of people still doing it with their spouses or they're friends with social distancing and wearing a mask. Uh, we've got a few groups going here in Canada that are allowed to um, socialize together. But hopefully that just gives you an idea of what the technique looks like, the fact that um, you can do it with another person right now. And also just at the end there, I'm going to show you more about how to do some standing exercises with it. Okay, so let's just look at some of those health benefits I talked about. So when you're walking, you're primarily using your lower extremity muscles like you are in a lot of activities that we do, like biking or hiking. But when you add on poles, you actually allow an opportunity for you to use 75 to 90% of your muscles. And here's a bonus that I just added in because I know a lot of us have been sedentary during the pandemic is that you also burned 20 to 46% more calories compared to walking. So that's sort of just more of a universal benefit. It is highly effective for core strengthening. So why is core strengthening important? It's important because it's key for your ability to walk 
properly um, for transfers, so for sit to stand, and also just a general overall health. What they found is that um, for so many conditions, it's actually more related to your waist circumference uh, than it is to actually your overall weight. And I think for all of us, I think we can all agree that um, just working on your abs is just an overall health goal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take myself off sharing for a second. Okay. And I'm just going to show you just a little demonstration to um, explain how does the poles or the, the core grip itself help out in terms of core strengthening. Because I think a lot of people can see from the videos how it helps to increase your cardio and some of those other benefits. But I think one of the challenges that people don't quite understand is how does it help out with core strengthening? So the whole, if I were to get you all to stand up with me, and what you can do is you can put your hand out, like you saw those people had out in the video, um, and then you can either just rest it on top of the back of a chair or on the table that you're in. So just put it out. So if you're giving me a friendly handshake and you're just gonna rest it on the top of that, uh, the table, and I'll just come a little bit closer. So the whole idea is that you don't do a tight grip. It's all based on a light one. If you do a tight one, you're actually gonna strain a lot of your hand and wrist muscles. The whole idea is relax your hand, but push down, okay? So you're doing it on the back of the chair. You just wanna do a downward force. And then put one hand on your abs. And what you should feel is that every time I press down, I'm actually getting contraction in my abdominal muscles. I can also feel it in my lats, my pecs, my spine erector muscles. That's why it's also used for low back pain. But the main thing I wanted to get you was the feeling of how it, um, it results in a contraction happening in your abs. So let's go back. to the PowerPoint, if, um, if you were to just walk, for example, for just one mile, you would actually achieve 1800 contractions in your abdominal muscles. So it's just a really simple, easy way for you to achieve core strengthening while you're walking. Okay, so let's move on now to the research review. So as I mentioned, um, there actually are over 300 studies on Nordic walking. Sorry, this should say actually there's 19 now on uh, using it with Parkinson's and then we've got 13 on our activator. So let's just go with a couple studies. Here's one that I often present on um, at international conferences. In this particular study, it was a randomized control study. So there was three different groups. There was one group that was just walking. There was one group that was doing flexibility and balance exercises. And there was one group that were using the walking poles. And what they found is that all the participants improved in terms of pain, balance, quality of life. But the group that was using walking poles had improved postural stability. Because when you press down on that ledge, mention, mention, before, it actually forces you to stand more upright. It pushes you forward so you take a bigger step and it helps to normalize the way that you walk. So we sort of call this gait pattern or gait variability. Um, and why is that so important that your walking is kept more functional or normal? What they found is, is that the more normal consistent your walking pattern is, the less likely you are to have a fall. And one of the questions I often get is, do those effects actually stay with people after uh, they've done polling? So here's Bill Chu, and he's been using our polls for many years since we started. Uh, he's got Parkinson's disease. If you can believe it, he's actually completed 23 half marathons. Um, and just a comment from him, he said that he noticed that the benefits stay with me for several hours after polling. So that's more of uh, a testimonial coming from, from Bill. 
What I'd like to show you is the importance of just keeping a normal walking pattern and how using the poles can really change that. So this is Barbara, who's got quite a few balance problems. She's had, she had um, some recent falls. She normally used a cane. Let's just take a look at her walking um, independently without any devices. And you can see there that, you know, um, small steps, she's walking very flat footed. She's walking slowly and she's really swinging her arms out because that actually helps Barbara just feel um, like she's got a bit more stability. What this figure eight is actually looking at is how much variability that there is in her walking. Look at that very walking with that shuffling gait pattern. And again, from an occupational therapy standpoint, one of the reasons why it's so important um, that you lift up your feet is that often people fall because they clip their foot on curbs, on sidewalks, um, you know, changing and flooring within your house because you're not lifting up your feet. And, and part of Parkinson's is that it really sort of promotes more that shuffling gait pattern. Let's look at Barbara using uh, the activator poles. One thing you can see right away is look how she's increased her walking stride, okay? And that re the large movements right now, I think for a lot of you, if you're familiar with PWR, LVSD, it's all about bigger movements, right? Preventing, you know, those smaller, smaller movements. And you can see a Barb's, Barb's more normally using her arms. She's walking faster. So let's look at kind of the results from there. She increased her speed of walking by 37%, her step length by 62%, and just reduce overall her gait variability. Okay, let's look at, this is um, a lady that is from California. Uh, she's got Parkinson's. So let's look at the changes here with um, her walking without and with the poles. Take a look at her arm swing and uh, the shuffling gait part in the first part and then uh, with poles in the second one. Look at that arm swing and her leg stride. Look how much her how bigger her steps are. called All Balance. I believe that is actually based in California. So I want to say too as well that the another comment we get from a lot of people is that the handle itself also provides a visual and a sensory cue. Sensory cueing, what I mean is that you can feel it in your hands, you can see it, and it is cueing you to people use that visual seeing the handle to make sure that they are reaching out more with it, that they're pushing down on that ledge. And again, arm swing is so important because arm swing is one of the things that keeps you upright. And again, is one of the aspects of fall prevention as well. Okay, here's another study that was just done on mood and depression. Um, for, for some people having Parkinson's, of course, affects you know, your, your overall mood and there's, you know, the frustration and the changes. And one of the things that it's, uh, the polls are actually used here in Canada as well is for um, just improving overall mental health. So I just thought I would conclude this as well. A couple of studies showing that using the polls uh, increased physical activity, mood, uh, depression, anger compared to walking alone. And of course, you're outside. There's a lot of research showing that when you exercise outside, you're also getting additional uh, physical and, and mental um, benefits. Of course, there's a vitamin D uh, there as well. We also have changed it here in Canada in terms of the poles being an effective option to some of the other devices that we use, which traditionally such as a cane, and I've got my uh, 
boyfriend Brad Pitt here just showing you about some of the challenges associated with the cane and that is um, you know you're leaning to one side and of course that's changing your posture uh, that's you it's changing your arm swing is causing muscle imbalances and oftentimes a lot of people have told us too just their own personal self image they would prefer to be using the walking poles it's it is a it's perceived as a um, as a wellness uh, tool you know a lot of times people have seen it for hiking and other activities so it doesn't seem to have that same connotation that some of the other devices do and this is actually Dr. Jack Taunton he was our chief medical officer for uh, the 2016 um, Olympics. He's had seven spinal operations and he is a big advocate of using the activated pose just for the overall um, rehab benefits, but also just in terms of that positive self-image. I just want to mention though, there are some contraindications. So definitely if you are already using canes or walkers, you do want to go and talk to your therapist to see if she thinks walking poles are appropriate. And um, I would not personally recommend it unless you've had an assessment. If you're in the mid to later stages of Parkinson's and you have ataxia. So those are definitely situations where you should be discussing it or trying it out with your therapist. I've seen some cases where with ataxia, it helps to normalize it and with other people it's a bit of a tripping hazard and then for other people your therapist may recommend that you can use the poles for daily exercising so maybe for going around the block or keeping up your walking pattern and doing maybe some seed and sandy exercises but she may recommend just for overall safety that you continue to use your cane or your walker as your primary walking tool so those are discussions that you can just have with your therapist. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to talk to you more specifically about uh, the design and the um, technique for balance. So as I mentioned earlier, the whole idea is that we developed um, the core grip with this large lip so that you can apply a downward force. Again, that's gonna push you upright for your posture that core strengthening and your balance. So again, you wanna do a loose grip because the whole idea is that we developed it so it was ergonomic so that it prevents less strain on your, on your wrist and you're always being able to keep your wrist in a nice comfortable position that reduces strain on the joints. Um, so one of the most common questions I get is why did we develop with that ledge instead of the strap? So um, so it's to support your wrist, you have lots of room for that downward pressure, but also there was a study that was done by uh, Knobloch in Germany that found that um, overall for the general public, Nordic walking is safe, but most injuries occur when the pole gets caught or if you trip and fall and you're still attached to the pole. So that highest injury is, um, is called the skier thumb injury. And we actually had Dr. Knobloch take a look at our design and he uh, he didn't do a study but he agreed that uh, he he did a statement and he basically said that yes he felt that um, our design had the potential to um, to possibly reduce the injuries that were related to straps the other thing we did was we changed it into a button lock system so I found originally about poles from all over the world that people had a a lot of trouble doing a turning lock system so we changed that into a button lock system and that will hold up to 200 pounds per pole so the whole idea is that you can lean on that pole a lot and it's not going to slide um, you can pull off the um, bell-shaped tip so if you are going on trails uh, walking on um, snow in the winter time or you're traveling, anytime there's a slippery condition, take off the bell-shaped tip and use the carbide steel tip instead. That would just give you a lot more stability. And then we changed it into this bell-shaped tip because it actually forces the pole in more of a vertical position, okay? And I'm gonna show you that more in the technique, but there's a study that we had done at University of Western Ontario um, here in Canada. And what they found is that 
when you want more balance, position your pole so it's more in a vertical position than I'm just going to show you in a few minutes. So that's what I mean right here. You want to keep the pole vertical. Okay, so uh, you probably saw earlier in the videos or more the traditional Nordic walking, the pole is more in a diagonal position, which I'm going to show you later. But for, for if you are just looking at walking poles to create more stability, more confidence, just so you can walk, whether that's in your house, around your neighborhood, I would suggest that you do the activator technique. Okay, and in this technique, your elbows are at a 90 degree angle and your pole is vertical. It's the same movement as regular walking. That's one of the reasons why it's so effective in terms of helping you out with just normalizing your walking pattern. Because basically when you're using poles, you're doing the same walking pattern as you normally would. So let's just take a look at a video. So just so you know, I'm going to show this to you quite quickly, but you can go onto our website. There's a ton of free videos there under getting started. And one of the, if you want to look at the activator, um, it'll say activator instructions, just uh, look, scroll down the menu and uh, you'll be able to see the um, other technique I'm going to show you as well. So I'm going to just see if I can move this ahead here. So I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but this is Barbara explain about the technique. Right foot, I'm going to take the left pole forward. And when I step with the left foot, it's the right pole forward. Notice that I'm keeping the poles vertical, so the bell-shaped tip on the bottom is always underneath the core grip handle on the top. It's also really important to press down on the ledge of the handles. So as you plant the pole, take the outside edge of your hand and press down. That's going to give you stability, balance, and also really tighten up your core muscles. So stand tall, an easy, loose grip with the hands, press down on the ledge of the handles. So I'm just going to hold it right there. So as just to clarify one of the things that Barb was saying is she was saying elbows at that 90 degree, you know, keep the pole vertical, press down. And she's actually, she's just walking as she normally would, which is opposite arm and leg, but she is lifting and planting the pole about the same distance as her opposite foot. And the reason why I like to say that is I do find sometimes when people are learning, they tend to, when I say bend their elbows, they'll tend to put the poles right beside their body and they'll kind of walk like this. And when you do that, you don't get that nice long arm swing that we really want to promote. Okay. The other thing I just want to mention to you too is even though I'm, I'm saying it's opposite arm and leg, you don't need to really focus on that because that is something that everyone does subconsciously. And I find if you think too much about, oh, I got to do opposite arm and leg, it actually makes it more challenging and people get frustrated. So don't worry about that. That's something your body is just naturally going to do as time goes on. And also I find sometimes even when therapists are explaining how to do the pulling for, um, for people with Parkinson's, they often put it in their hands. So make sure that they've got the, they're doing, you know, they've got their elbows bent. They've told me, you know, plant the pole, same distance as that front foot, but they won't emphasize opposite arm and leg because again, your body will just naturally do that with time. And one thing I should have mentioned too is that there is an R and an L at the top. So you do want to make sure that you've got the correct right pole in the right hand because the ledge faces outward and that's, that ledge is what you need for your balance and your core strengthening.
Okay, now what I'd like to do is talk to you about the urban polling technique for increasing intensity. So if you have very mild symptoms and you're really looking at using the polls because you just want to exercise, you don't need to use uh, anything, any support perhaps for, uh, for walking, um, you really want to just get out there and exercise and you want to go at a higher intensity than walking, then I'm going to suggest to you the urban polling technique. Now, there has been a recent study, I'm sure that you all have heard about, that people with Parkinson's in the early stages, when they have mild symptoms, they can achieve the optimal benefits for exercising when they work out at 80% of their maximum heart rate. So that's quite a high intensity. And um, again, that might be, that is something that I think you should probably discuss with your family physician too. Like, does he, you know, agree you're in the, you've just got mild symptoms, your early stages, but you know, one of the main things you can do it is just by uh, the fact that no one has suggested that you use any device for walking and you feel quite confident with your walking ability and you're really looking at something more to exercise. Okay, so in this technique, this is more like the traditional technique. That is your elbow is nice and straight. The poles are actually going to be on a vertical position. Okay, because and in this one, you're actually going to use the boot shaped tip. Okay, so if you've got the activator pole, what you can do is you can take off the bell shaped tip and you can put on the boot shaped tip or you can just get a pole that actually has the boot shaped tip on it to begin with. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you a video that shows you what this technique looks like. I should just mention too, the boot shaped tips are facing backwards because you actually want the boot to roll forward and give you more speed. So let's just take a look at what does that look like? stop it there because I think that gives you a perfect picture of what the technique looks like. Um, the elbow is straight, the pole is on a diagonal, and look at the leg stride here. So obviously these ladies are going at a quite a fast clip. Um, that's something of course you can work up to, but I just wanted to, to show you um, how it can potentially, if you do want to work at that, 80% of your maximum heart rate, how the polling can be done at a very slow and steady rate for the activator, or you can really bring up the intensity if you want to through the urban polling technique. Now, again, those instructions and videos of going through all the different steps are on our website. So what I'm going to have you do right now, though, if you, do you mind just standing up with me again? And I'm just going to get you to practice those two techniques. So, Because I find if you just re, kind of remember these two motions, I, I usually call them the handshakes, you'll be able to remember the foundation of both of the techniques. Okay, so if I get you to Stand up, bend your elbow, right, at that 90 degree angle. And what I want you to do is you just move your arms back and forth, back and forth. That's it. So this is the activator technique. Where we're going to keep our poles nice and vertical, and that is enables us to do that when we keep our elbows at that 90 degree angle. Okay. So just move it back. And the reason why I want you to move it back and forth too 
Same is time. Because, as no. I mentioned, one of the most common errors is that people do this. Okay, it's not. There's a lot of shoulder movement. There's a lot of arm swing, even in the activator technique. Okay, everyone looks great there. Now, let's take a look at what would it look like for your hands in terms of the urban holding. So what I'd like you to do is relax your hands, keep them completely straight. And I want you to pretend you're giving me a handshake. Okay, and keep your elbows nice and straight, ladies, nice and straight. And can you put it out as if you're giving me a nice friendly handshake? So normally, if we were all together live, I would go around the room and I'd get everyone to shake each other's hand. But the nice thing about this too is, can you see how much that the movement has a really beautiful flow to it? Why is that so important for people who have Parkinson's? Because when you get going with this movement, the reason why it helps to reduce freezing and improve coordination is that you get into this nice swing, the poles are pushing you forward, and it just helps you to move in a very coordinated and fluid way. Okay, so it's almost like, I wish, I know a lot of times I can do this with music, but just to show you, and you just saw in that video too, when the two ladies were doing it, it was just a nice flow that they had going with it. And that's how it also increases your walking speed, right? Remember earlier, I showed you that about gait assessment, 37% for that uh, for that one lady. I've seen in the research, uh, the increases can be as high as 90%. So walking fast. And interesting, if you look at the research, Walking speed is actually correlated to functional independence and uh, mortality as well. So, if you are traveling or walking on trails, snow, and sand, I would suggest that even if you are doing the urban polling technique, you actually go back to the activator. So if you're in and you know, you're traveling somewhere, you're not used to the terrain, um, you know, Sharon and I were just saying, you know, lots of places in Europe, they've got those cobble um, sidewalks, uh, you know, walking in sand. And so go back to your activator technique because that's the technique you always want to use when you want more balance. And a lot of times, I should just mention too, like it's not an either or situation. I've had a lot of people use both techniques, depending on what they're using it for. And of course, if you're going to walk in sand, you know, or um, it's the winter time or gravel, and you feel that the tip is sliding, either tip, remember, pull it off and use this carbide seal tip instead. Okay. So now we are actually already at the seated and standing exercises. So uh, basically, why would you exercise with poles? Really for the same reasons that you would walk with them. So originally here in Canada, we were primarily using it to really help people to improve their walking ability. But I would say we use it just as much now for seated and standing exercises, which I'm just going to show you. And the reason why is that the poles provide, you know, four points of contact. So you've got support on both sides of your body. Again, you can use that ledge, again, for pushing you up into nice posture for your seated exercises, you know, increasing your confidence to do larger movements, which I'm just going to show you in a few minutes, um, improve your posture, uh, sorry, um, it again provides that visual and sensory cues to help you to do the movements that are required. And it also allows you to have a bit more versatility in where you're exercising. I know as a therapist, I often used to say to people, exercise by the kitchen sink. Well, that's not always a fun place to do your exercises, but you know, if you've got a sturdy wall or a, st uh, a sturdy chair, so a sturdy wall, how about a sturdy chair and a wall behind you? Um, and you've got the poles in front, um, it's providing you with a, just a lot more support so that you can exercise in different places. But most importantly, I hope you um, 
can show you that it just makes exercising more fun and more dynamic. I'm going to show you some exercises that are from very similar to PWR or um, LVST principles. So I'm just going to take you out here for a second. And I'm going to stop sharing. If you've got um, polls, uh, please join along with us. If you don't, you please just join along and do some of the movements with us. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just sit back in that chair at the back here and show you some seed and standing exercises. Okay, can everyone see me okay? I'm just gonna move this over a little bit more. Um, so let's just go through a few safety tips oops, with using the poles. First of all, you need to bring them at a shorter length. So I had mine on eight and now I was just moving it to four, okay? And that's because you don't want them so high up. You want to have them so that they're lower. So that really gives you a nice upward trunk posture um, with your muscles in a nice relaxed position too. Okay, so I'm just going to shorten this one as well. So I'm going to put that at hole number four. And I, as I mentioned earlier, I've got a sturdy chair. I've got the wall behind here. Now it's always helpful as well, if you feel like you don't have a lot of balance to begin with, is bring your feet further apart. Okay, oops, let me bring this down so you can see my feet. Bring your feet further apart and the poles further apart. Whenever you bring a wide base of support, you're gonna get more stability. Now you may feel like you don't need that, in which case you can always bring them in closer or you can challenge yourself by bringing it in closer too. But the first thing I'm going to do is I just, uh, I wanted to show you just a couple of exercises. The first thing though is I'd like to show you just how the poles can help you with improving your posture. I think if you're like most of us, we sit uh, all day long at our computers like this. And what I'd like you to do is, um, is to actually straighten yourself up. The way I'm doing that is I'm pushing down that ledge and I'm coming into a nice upright seated position. Okay, again, relax, push yourself up. And if you don't have poles, just, just do say relax and then push yourself up. You can use your core by bringing your belly button in and using that as well to push yourself up. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just get you to you want to have nice posture, but you also want to be relaxed. And one of the ways I'm going to get you to do that is just open up your hands. Let's do that a few times. Just open them up. That's it. That's it. Okay. Now let's just start off with walking. Let's just march a little bit. And remember, push down and keep yourself nice and upright. Let's do some just basic marching. And now let's lean forward. See how using the poles provides me with more stability out front so I can feel like I've got more confidence to do a bigger movement out front, okay? And let's just look at a PWR movement as Parkinson's Wellness Recovery, focusing on big movements. And you come forward and then bring your arms back. That's it, forward, bring your arms back. Oh, doesn't that feel good in your shoulders too? And remember, it's all about big movements. And I'm doing a lot of weight shifting front and back. Why is weight shifting important? It's one of the key components in terms of balance is your ability to shift your weight forward and back. Okay. Now let's look at some other um, exercises uh, for weight shifting side to side. Let's start stirring the pot using our poles and Hopefully what you can see is I'm actually shifting my weight side to side. So if you don't have holes again, just shift your weight or pretend you're stirring a pot, but I'm actually shifting my buttocks from side to side, okay? Before I was doing forward and back, now I'm doing side to side. And again, the poles are supporting me so I can come much further out front. I'm pushing down to keep me in a nice upright position. 
And let's do a bit of a breast stroke. Let's come forward and around. Forward, shifting my weight forward and around. Forward, now I'm moving back, around. That's it, that's it. And let's just show you a little bit. We can bring the poles up as well. And let's just do a little bit of some uh, Canadian kayaking. I'm sure this is the same for the United States, but let's just call this Canadian kayaking. Again, I'm shifting my weight back and forth. And I'm just using the poles to do some more functional movements. Lots of nice arm swing. You can do the canoeing if you want on the one side and on the other side. And then finally, I'm just going to show you one last thing, and that is sit to stand. So let's just use this to bring our buttocks off. It's a great exercise for core strengthening, but it's also a great way to show you the proper way to stand up. And that is, is that I'm shifting my weight here, forward, and eventually to up. Okay, and then of course there's a whole bunch of exercises that you can do in standing. So I just have to bring my poles up a little bit. Okay, so you can do weight shifting, which is great for walking. I can do weight shifting front and back. And how about some side stepping? Side stepping is really important because one of the reasons why people fall too is that they aren't able to get their foot out to the side fast enough. Okay, so you can go with different angles. And again, you could just do walking. And let's just do one last PWR movement where I'm taking the poles, I'm reaching up to the ceiling. Okay. Perfect. So hopefully you got some examples of how you can modify what you're doing or change it and get more range, get more confidence with utilizing the poles. Okay, I'm just going to move it forward. So I thought I would actually demonstrate those to you instead of showing you some videos. And so that basically brings us to the uh, summary. So as I mentioned earlier, this is an evidence-based tool. There are 19 studies on PubMed on using walking poles. We've got 13 independent studies on our activator poles. Use the activator technique when you really want to just have more confidence for basic walking, for balance and stability. You can use the urban pulling technique when you have very mild symptoms and you really want to increase your intensity for walking or really increase your walking speed. And again, I showed you how to use the poles for just basic seat and standing exercise for improving posture, balance, being able to do bigger movements and just having more support. So I, I spoke with Sharon and we actually came up with a coupon code for um, uh, her, her, her members are uh, with uh, Twitchy Women. So here is the actual coupon code. Um, you can get 15% off and free shipping. You can get it at um, earnpulling.com. We're also available on Amazon as well, uh, but you can't you just say, you know, you can't use the coupon code on Amazon. That's another that option. Twitchy, for what it's worth, you have Twitchy spelled wrong. I don't know if you Oh my that. goodness. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So okay. it should be T-W-I-T-C-H-Y. Oh my goodness. Okay. Let Not me a just, big deal. Yes. Okay. So it should work with the correct spelling. Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> I will okay. send it out to everybody. <laughs> okay, okay. And um, I just thought I would end up with this video from Harry McMurtry. I don't know if you guys have heard from, but he actually has Parkinson's. He walked from New York City to Toronto a couple years ago. He originally didn't have the um, activator poles, um, and he fell a few times 
initially when he was uh, starting off at the end of the day because he was so exhausted. I believe he was doing 15, um, 15 kilometers per day. But once uh, someone actually gave him the idea of having the activated poles, he told us he never fell again. He actually called them a game changer. And here's just a video clip about him. Imagine walking 500 miles. That's over 800 kilometers. Three people all living with Parkinson's disease set out to prove that they could do it. And they inspired a whole bunch of people along the way. CTV's Dana Levinson reports. This is the last leg of a 500 mile journey set from New York City to Toronto. These three are walking for Parkinson's. We want to tell people that they can lead normal lives, get people out of the shadows. Diagnosed 12 years ago, 54-year-old Harry McMurtry is determined to debunk any myths about the disease and raise money. The walk began on May 6th in New York, where he now lives. Day one, 50 miles down, yes. Originally from Toronto and was a lawyer here for many years, he wanted to walk back to the city with his two friends, Sue Thompson and Dr. Ross Sugar. Both also live with the disease. Today, McMurtry was joined by longtime friend Louise Russo, who he represented after she was shot and paralyzed. I met some amazing people in my life, been blessed, and Harry's one of them. Parkinson's disease can cause tremors and affect fine motor skills, but that wouldn't stop this 500 mile team. They were up every day at 5 a.m. and walked seven hours every single day. McMurtry was greeted by the mayor. Yeah, so I just thought that's such a great video because one of the things that Harry wanted to do was really promote awareness of um, the importance of just staying active in terms of managing your uh, symptoms and just such an, uh, a great accomplishment. Hopefully what you saw there too is just that one of the things that he was doing prior to using the poles is that he wasn't moving one arm, he was stooped over. And those are just some of the other observations that Harry had Imagine using the poles. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is to see if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask me anything. Uh, I guess Sharon, they could just write it in the chat box. Is that I'll right? In the chat. Yeah, and I, I'll read them too. Uh, Kimmy Regal asks, she says, how can I do this with my dog? He needs to walk too. Okay, um, great question. I always get asked that. Honestly, it just depends on your dog. Like there is some people who use the um, that leash that can be wrapped around your waist where the dog walks in front or in back. That's worked really well. But again, that would be really dependent on how trainable your dog is and um, you know whether you get them complied because otherwise I think the leash is gonna get mixed up with the poles. I'm not sure if you have this option as well. We have a lot of places where you can walk and your dog can be off leash. So again, that works out well, but um, yeah, absolutely hear you. You wanna try to uh, include your, uh, your dog in your exercise regime. Yeah. And uh, somebody said they had the same thought when they walked their dog, but they're less, if, if they walk their dog, they're less likely to go for another walk. So, right. but, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, in that case too, maybe the seat and standing exercises would be an option for you. You know what, even if you can just go for, I hear what you're saying, you don't want to go for two walks, but if you can do a shorter walk, just to help out with, you know, um, using that as an exercise time to help to normalize your walking pattern. Maybe you just do it for five, 10 minutes. I think there's um, can be some benefit with that as well. Okay. Uh, Judith asks, is there a way to determine the best length stride for each individual? I was striding too far and although it felt good, it caused hip issues. Yeah, you know what? I'm everything for me is about being slow and steady. So if you find that, absolutely, I've talked to you about, you know, of course you want to have those bigger movements, but you don't want to go from being really small movements to really big movements because that is going to be too stressful on your joints, on your muscles. It's all about gradually increasing that leg stride. I mean, initially it's just about feeling comfortable with the poles and just, you know, getting the rhythm right. But I would say, um, you may have overdone it. See if you can bring your stride back in a bit. Um, don't do the pulling every day. 
It is a repetitive task. Your body needs to get used to it. You're using now 75 to 90% of your muscles. So um, slow and steady, gradually taking breaks. Those are all things that I would do to, to um, incorporate the activity in slowly and safely. Okay. Next question, are the seated exercises on the website? Uh, no, they're not. That is something that we are hoping to um, have available in the next few months. So if you stay um, in contact with me, um, my email is actually mandy at urbanpolling.com or come back to the website. We are hoping to have those available um, in a few months in a, in a video format. Okay. Um, let's see. If you have hiking poles with straps, would using the straps correctly have the same benefit as the ledge? Yeah, I mean, as an, an OT, um, you know, one of the things is that if you look at the research uh, related to the strap itself, I would suggest not using a strap. Um, you know, everyone's going to make their own personal decisions, absolutely. But I would say that uh, based on the evidence, you know, um, try to avoid actually using the strap itself. Okay. Uh, Gail asks, except for the poles that fold, is the tip the only difference between the different types of poles? Uh, the difference is, is that our, the urban poles actually come with a turning lock system. So the Series 300 and the 4 Life. Um, and if you have really good grip strength and you've just got very mild symptoms, those would be fine. I do find for other people where it's about balance and stability, where you're really going to be leaning on the pole for stability or you're using it instead of another a device, then the activator with that button lock system that holds up to 200 pounds would be more, um, would be more in line with what we would recommend. Yeah. And from personal experience, my first two sets of poles that I bought had the slide lock, the other kind of lock, and they would move. You know, you, you press too hard and the and pole would go down, it would collapse. Mm -hmm. So there's no way that these can collapse, which is great. Um, okay, you have many different types of poles on your website. How do we select the right one? Yeah, I mean, I would, honestly, I would go with the activator because you could always get the um, boot shape tip that you can put it on so you can do the other technique and then yeah. when there's times yeah. when you've got the flu or you're not feeling as steady you can take this off and you can use the um, bell shaped tip so it kind of gives you the option of not having to get um, you know different poles but um, as I mentioned earlier if you have very mild symptoms you're very active uh, yeah you can use the uh, series 300 the four life poles um, if you want to have both, then I would, uh, or anyone, or you just want it for balance, or you want to use it for both techniques, or just so that you only have to get one pull, I would get the activator. Okay. All right. Uh, sometimes I kick my pole and worry about tripping. Any suggestions? Um, hmm. Sometimes you kick your pole. Well, then I would definitely only use your poles when you can fully concentrate. You're probably, if you are tripping or you're, you're kicking them a lot, I wouldn't suggest you use poles as your primary walking tool. I would suggest you just use it for exercising when you can really focus on it, when you can really think about um, where you're positioning it, start off slowly, spend a lot of time working on that technique first before you go on different terrain or you start going faster. But I would say again, slow and steady might be your route. The other thing you could do is uh, talk to a therapist. See if she can give you some ideas about how to use them safer. And to be honest, there are for some people, as I mentioned earlier, where if you've got ataxia or you're not finding it's helping you with coordination, the polls may be just contraindicated for you. But I would say keep trying, um, but shorter period of time, try to, so that you can focus on it. And then once you've got that down pat and you feel more confident that you're not going to trip on it, you start using it for longer periods of time. Okay. Um, 
All right, we've got a few more questions, but I think I'm gonna ask people to stay on after uh, we close because it's after 11 already. Um, somebody tried to get on with, the, with use the code and it isn't working. So give us a chance, give us a few minutes. We'll get it going. If you try later today, it should be working. Okay. I'm sorry, okay. I may have given that wrong spelling. So can you try it in both ways? Um, sorry, yeah, she my said apologies. She did, but... I'm a terrible speller. So can you, if that person wants to just try it both ways with this correct spelling and with this way and Let's see if we can get that to work. That would be. But it, it, it doesn't work on Amazon, correct? Yeah, it won't work on Amazon. It'll just work on our website. I did try it both ways on Urban Polling. Oh, you did, and it didn't work. Correct. OK, my apologies. So you know what? What I would suggest is um, I will get this fixed. Unfortunately, I won't be able to get it fixed until tomorrow because uh, our office is closed right now. And I will check to see why that code is not working. Okay. Yeah. All right. So Thank I you. am. Okay, Eli. Okay, we're going to change our screen. I'm going to just wrap up real quick, and then okay. those that want to stay on, you're welcome to stay on. Um, okay. So Mandy, do you want to turn yours off? And Eli, yep. you can turn mine on. Okay. And here we go. Okay. So. Um, the World Parkinson's Congress, which meets every three years, has decided that they're going to, in between years, have a conference online through Zoom. So this year, it will be May 17th through 21st, and you can view this from wherever you are seated, you know, in your home, wherever you are. Um, it will be very exciting, lots of good information, and you'll probably get your first PhD based on this one. Next year, you get your second PhD. Okay, uh, next slide. Next, okay, so thank you, Mandy. Uh, we are sending you love and hugs with a virtual tiara. Oh, nice. Because I can't give you. you one in person. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> love it. <laughs> we do it every, every, for all our speakers. Okay, and next slide. Uh, next, in two weeks, we have Dr. So Sonia Mather, also from Canada. Uh, if you haven't, check out her website, Unshakable MD. I don't know yet what she's speaking about. She is young onset. It's very, very interesting, very involved in, um, in uh, PD Avengers, which I think we, we've had, some, uh, she will probably speak about that as well. And then in March, 7, March, we have a couple of programs we're working on. I don't know exactly what's gonna be when yet. So just keep, in, just keep checking back and uh, Finally, next slide. Um, we have partnered with the Mayro Foundation uh, to raise so that we can use their 501c3 in order to, for if you would consider making a donation, that we can continue to provide these programs to you at no cost. You're welcome to join to do so. If not, we love you anyway. Join us no matter what. Um, and finally. Just our contact information is the next slide. And um, check out the blog tomorrow, probably tomorrow, I will be sending out the video recording along with any information that you need that I will get from Mandy, including the, the what what code is going to work on urban polling. So wait, uh, that will be in the next day or two. And um, otherwise, I hope everybody has a great rest of the Sunday, great Sunday. Enjoy the Super Bowl. If you wanna stay on till 11.30 and ask more questions, please do so. Um, and otherwise I will see you in two weeks.